Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the final session of the Stella Smart Beauty Awards 2021, um, sponsored by Latest in Beauty. I am Sonia Harry. I'm the beauty director of The Telegraph. Um, and over the next 45 minutes, we are going to be doing a deep dive into fragrance, which I am so excited about. It's our first time doing a live event with fragrance. Um, and joining me this evening is the wonderful award-winning fragrance expert, Alice Sue Park. Hi, Hi, Alice. Hi. Oh, thanks so much for joining me today. So we're going to have um, lots of really interesting chats over the next um, hour, 45 minutes, hour. Well, we may run over. So, Alice, you have bought I've a bought plethora my friends. of fragrances with us. So um, as part of our Stella um, Smart Beauty Awards, we have a fragrance category, yep. which we can kind of let our readers know about later but um what i really want to do with you today is kind of just talk about fragrance because yeah. there is so much to talk about oh my gosh i mean we can and make like this three hours do you know what signature I mean? sense like how you find your perfect fragrance i mean for you what does fragrance mean in terms of like you know is it a real personal emotional thing for you fragrance it definitely in fact to a point where i've now just we were talking about it before, I've streamlined everything that I do, my whole sort of career in beauty just to fragrance now because it is the thing that just, it, it sparks something and it sparks emotion and fragrance is all about emotion. I'm a very emotional person, I'm a Gemini. I'm either Darth I'm Vader. I'm a Gemini. Or, I'm either Darth okay. Vader or Mary Poppins. I'm either <laughs> one of those extremes. And I find that um, with fragrances, I can lean into certain emotions with fragrance. Like if I'm feeling actually quite moody, I want to I want to enjoy that mood, and I'll wear something sort of dark and smoky, a bit of a kind of force field. Or if it's a Sunday morning, I'm feeling energetic. I mean, maybe not Sunday morning, maybe like Tuesday morning. Um, I'll find something citrusy, or I'll grab something that makes me feel kind of outdoorsy and full of energy, even if I'm trapped at home working from my desk in lockdown. So. Um, I find that fragrance is definitely like my self-care trick. And everyone's got a different way of doing that. Some people do yoga, some people meditate. I open my fragrance cupboard and I have quite a lot of fragrances because I've been collecting them over the years. And I find something that just feeds an emotion. And I have like sort of my top kind of 10, 12 that I love. And I know this is all about finding your signature scent, but I do believe in finding your signature scents and that there are the ones and the idea of building a bit of a wardrobe to feed all of those different emotions and moods is such a nice idea. So hopefully we can give everyone lots of ideas today. Amazing. Um, I mean, that's the thing. Like, do you feel like it's um, uh, slightly, it, it's quite difficult to find just one signature scent that will suit you day and night? Oh, completely. For me, it would be like, going to a museum and just looking like just looking at one painting. It yeah. just doesn't make sense to me because throughout the year, the weather changes, your mood changes, how, what you wear, the event you're going to. Um, I find that there's so much beautiful creativity out there to enjoy. And it doesn't matter about price. It doesn't matter about your size. It doesn't matter about your skin color, your height, your width, your anything at all fragrance fits mm -hmm. and there's something out there for everyone and I love fragrances that cost five quid from a pharmacy four seven eleven is like a, a you know it costs yeah. nothing at all and you can buy it all over the place I have fragrances that cost you know t over 200 quid that I love as well but everything in between as well like there's this real playground there and something to make you feel something completely different whether it's like the joy and thrill of a slide or the you know, just a sort of hiding in a little kind of teepee tent. I always think about perfume as as a playground and hitting lots of different emotional like notes. Amazing. Um, and one of the questions that kept cropping up in our pre-submitted questions was almost just kind of working out the basics of what is a EDT? Yeah. What is an EDP? What is a cologne? How do you kind of figure out the differences between those okay it's just one of those questions that always comes up it's always. a little bit like the offside rule yeah <laughs> you can be told it once and then it'll kind of go in one ear straight out the other so eau de parfum eau de toilette and then you have the lighter splashier colognes and it's not so much about 
the um, it's not about intensity or power it's more about the quantity of perfume oils that are used right. so in an eau de parfum you'll have a higher percentage um, which means that probably the longevity will carry on a bit more in eau de toilette it'll be a slightly less uh, heavy quantity of oils but it doesn't mean that it's a lesser fragrance it means that it's just been composed in this really clever way to make all of the um, all of the fragrance notes shine, but in a way that's uh, on a sort of, sort of lighter weight. And the best way I can explain it is a bit like foundation versus tinted moisturizer. Mm. They're both incredible products. One's not just diluted, it's just made to feel more subtle and to look a little bit more transparent and to feel a bit more lightweight in texture. And I think about fragrance in the same way. I think about it in texture and color and temperature. So. Um, so that's really the difference. And then cologne would be, um, cologne naturally sort of is, is more geared towards those citrusy flavours, like big splashy, yeah. herbal, aromatic, botanical, garden, sort of herb garden borders and light citrus. And those, um, when you look at the kind of molecule size, they're quite small, so they evaporate quite quickly. Mm. Whereas something like um, vanilla or tobacco or leather is a much heavier molecule so it'll last on the skin and it won't disperse and diffuse quite as quickly so those te those heavier fragrances tend to last longer and heavier just because of the molecule weight not heavy as in headache heavy that's interesting so one of the question another question that kind of cropped up quite a lot um, is when it comes to citrusy scents um, which actually I kind of I'm always quite drawn to mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do you make them last longer? It's a really tricky one because the nature of a citrus fragrance would be to kind of evaporate and be quite flighty. Yeah. But there are some citrus oils out there and whether they're natural or synthetic and beautifully made synthetic oils that have been designed to kind of slow release. Like if you look at a bergamot, for instance, a bergamot's a bit like a sort of knobbly, uh, lemony orange, and it's really complex, quite a floral citrus note. Um, but if it's a really, really good quality bergamot that's been, you know, just, and, and this is a true story, like with bergamot fruit, there are these old guys in Italy from Calabria who take a sea sponge and they rub the skin of the bergamot and they squeeze out the oil and the quality of that oil, it's almost like a per whole perfume in itself. It's wow. floral, it's citrusy, it's amazing. And the quality of that and the depth of that oil lasts and lasts and lasts on the skin. So if you want something that is going to be quite citrusy and light, look for a company that is, look for a brand that has really put a lot of passion and creativity and soul into the making of the perfume because that's what you want to spend your money on. You want to spend your money on those that quality. And I don't necessarily mean the quality of like natural raw ingredients. Some synthetics are so important and beautiful and very, um, you need synthetics to create a full perfume as well. And often they're more sustainable than natural than some natural mm. ingredients so it's a really interesting like i find it like i'm such a geek like i find it fascinating <laughs> um but you can get lots of citrus fragrances that last forever like aqua de palma do a bergamot fragrance which is just sunshine in a bottle but the whole day long it's like amazing how they've made it it's like a total masterpiece aqua de palma um the citrusy scents are yeah. beautiful, aren't oh, they? Sunshine. And it's their signature, it's their sort of, um, their purpose is to create fragrances just flooded with like luminosity and joy because it's Italian and it's easygoing and it's fabulous and it's chic and, oh God, I just love that brand. And we have the same initials as well, so I oh, just yes. adore them. It's amazing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and are there certain ways to wear fragrance to make it last longer? Definitely. So. Do you remember like in the, oh, not the olden days, but you'd buy like a set for Gran or an auntie with a moisturiser and a bubble bath yeah. and a thing. And actually there's real um, like truth in that method because when your skin is sort of shower fresh and it's it's more susceptible to clinging on to things because your skin is damp and it's not dry. So it's going to not soak in more, but it's going to hang on to mm. fragrance molecules for longer. So a body lotion and then the perfume and then let it dry, 
more perfume on top like I'm a sort of you know keep going like hedonist <laughs> oh my gosh yeah completely hair mists there are some amazing hair mists now which are fantastic because they're um they're not uh even though they're not full of alcohol they're full of ingredients that will really cling on to the hair and because hair is porous it tends to hang on to fragrance a lot longer than skin does that's why good tip for making your fragrance last longer on your wrist rather than spraying here always spray on top of your wrist because the hairs will cling on to the um, fragrance for longer and also when you wash your hands throughout the day you're less likely to wash off the top of your hands because you kind of wash your wrists a little bit when you when you wash your hands so it lasts longer if you do Amazing. tops of yeah is there truth in the kind of spritzing in your elbow? Definitely, creature? because it's a heat point, and lots of um, perfume <coughs> brands talk about um, like pulse points because mm. you know oh, spraying behind the knee yeah. or just behind your neck. I'm a bit like, put it everywhere. Why not? Like <laughs> yeah. I will stand outside the shower and just drench myself if it's a cologne because I want that splashy sort of feel. Um, always my hair because. Um, because it's my security blanket and people with long hair and I'm quite big so I kind of use my hair as like my sort of hiding place and my kids kind of nuzzle into my hair and I like that my hair always smells of very subtle of, of what, yeah. whatever I'm, I'm wearing but generally if you have sensitive skin hair mists are brilliant um, I always spray my clothes as well from a distance as to not kind of you know do stains and stuff but generally I just go for it and yeah. then you know it tends to not necessarily last longer but I know it's definitely all over me and there's a real presence there. Amazing and florals are a big talking point yeah. because um, you know we had lots of questions about uh, recommendations for new florals, any updates or any like new favourites you have. Are there any that we've got here? Oh my gosh, that tons you can kind and tons. Of and florals are let the, me one sniff. of those really strange things because Florals, okay, let's take rose for instance. Yeah. Like everyone loves like a rose, but there are so many different types of roses. There's like, I always kind of think about it on a scale of Bridgerton to Tim Burton. So you could have like <laughs> a really wet garden, dewy, slightly apple crunch rose that smells like you've, like one of those very pale pink blousy roses in the garden and sort yeah. of 6 a.m. Or you have like a dark red velvety, quite stiff rose that may be like, Johnny Depp's kind of riding down a dark, spooky <laughs> forest holding and Helena Bonham Carter's there in a kind of Tim Burton way. Something that's quite, um, I don't know, quite sort of dark and dangerous and yeah. uh, rich and opulent. So florals can be all sorts of things. They can be flower shop or they can be quite sort of, yeah, quite kind of opulent. Um, but there are some really beautiful um, florals out, actually. Uh, a really good one example is... Um, the new Chloe Naturel. Now this is the sort of Bridgerton garden rose. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. A little bit of fruitiness in there to keep it kind of bright and juicy and dewy and mouth-watering. Oh, and actually delicious. this is an interesting one. So the Chloe brand, which is very passionate about um, sustainability, this fragrance, um, the ribbon and the bottle and the packaging is all made of recycled material. Um, it's a sustainably sourced uh, loads of the ingredients in the perfume are sustainably sourced and fair trade sourced. Um, the alcohol is a natural alcohol. It's vegan. Um, I mean, in fragrance, pretty much everything is vegan. I think some brands just say vegan because it's yeah. a talking point. Yeah. But you know what? Good for Chloe. Um, this would actually be a really nice one for a sort of older teenager, goddaughter, daughter, niece, that sort of thing, because it's... Um, it feeds into a lot of the beliefs that, um, that that generation are into at the moment, but it's a really beautiful, elegant, um, subtle, dewy, wet rose that's not too sickly sweet. And actually mm. there's a lovely softness because there's a mimosa note, which is a little bit like pollen and it makes it kind of soft on the edges. Really, really pretty. I mean, Love that's that quite a, um, uh, that, that seems like quite a good crowd pleaser. Yeah, definitely, that's definitely so. good crowd pleaser because it's, I say inoffensive, but it's a good like office one as well. Yeah. It's not going to make people go, "Wow, that <laughs> stepped into the room before she did." I mean, personally, I quite like those perfumes that are like, you know, imposing. I think they're great icebreakers. I personally love kind of big perfumes, not big as in headachey, but just present and interesting. Yeah. Um, and this one is very present and interesting, but in a very soft, dewy sort of way. 
very kind of transparent and really gentle, inoffensive if you're getting into the lift with loads of people because everyone's going back to work now. Um, lovely gift as well. The bottle's so pretty. It's so elegant. It's a real dressing table one. Um, and really speaks to uh, a generation who care about the provenance of every single part of their product mm, now. I love that. Um, any other florals here that we can oh my gosh. take a good um, sniff ooh, Okay, this is a really gorgeous new one. So Tiffany & Co um, created a fragrance a few years ago uh, and it's inspired by um, the kind of gl the, the crystalline glow of a diamond but also the metal that they used and this is the rose gold version. So you've got these notes of like black currant and pink pepper to give the kind of flash and sparkle of a diamond and then the sort of lovely warm slightly ambery woods to give the impression of the rose gold oh, that sort of lovely, lovely rose but that's been sort of surrounded like with a bit of a cashmere jumper it's very grown up isn't it it's it beautiful. feels like it's something you should wear at a at a bit of an event yes like it, exactly. it has presence isn't it really i mean so gorgeous like what a yum bottle as beautiful well. bottle so nice i love that one um Okay, more florals. Let's have a think. Um, do you know what? Mm, where should we go? Okay, still in florals, but slightly more jungly oh. and a bit more green. Oh, this one. I and I say floral, love even this. though a lot of people are like, no, it's just green. Actually, this new Frederick Mal by Anne Flippo Synthetic Jungle. Like, what a fun name. Like, I love it. This is. Oh, it is wet kind of those, what are those, mons is it monstera oh, leaves? Oh my gosh. Like those, like, if, as if you've snapped an aloe and you've like just drunk all the kind of dribbly water that's coming out. It's so green, it's so refreshing, crunchy, but the crunchiness comes from Lily of the Valley. I have to spray that Isn't on that the amazing? back of my, that Isn't is amazing? just amazing. So you know how Lily of the Valley can be quite, um, quite hypnotic and very powerful like the closer you get to a yeah. lily of the valley the stronger it is but think about the the green shoot and the big leaves and the sort of earthiness of a lily of the valley it's quite um there's something very green and dewy about it and that's so if you like florals but you don't want to go to bridgerton <laughs> flower shop and you want to go more Kew Gardens, hot, steamy, mm. hot house kind of florals with loads of these wet green notes. It's amazing, isn't it? That, that is, is like, so phenomenal. delicious. Um, has there been a real kind of trend or move towards more of these kind of green, grassy? Definitely, places? definitely, because actually not everyone wants to smell of, you know, rich vanillas or um, blousy florals. There's a lot of sweet stuff out there. This is a really good example. Can we just talk about this bottle as well? The wow. Anisui, um, uh, I think it's oh. Anis Anisui Sky, and it's got this sort of note of popcorn in it. Really fun for oh, kind of lovely. young people. I love this one. It's so mad. Um, so lots of those, but as a just kind of counterbalance, the there are some amazing green, biting, fresh fragrances made by super geniuses like Anne Flippo oh. with Frederick Mal's direction. So he's yeah. a bit like a sort of fragrance a movie director and Anne Flippo is the perfumer. And, and the they, smartest bottle, oh like, I mean, so elegant. that like, on the... And they do big ones and like little tiny vials and stuff. Oh God, this brand is amazing. Um, and like worth every single penny, in my opinion. Is that like, a sort of fragrance that would, would last on the skin? The green. The green. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely, because it's made by Anne Flippo, who is this genius at combining amazing botanicals with really clever little florals and notes that you wouldn't expect to make those fresh notes really last. It is totally mm. wild, isn't it? That's amazing. It smells like the sort of jungle in Jurassic Park. And do you kind of feel like, because we had quite a few questions about you know, day-to-day -day fragrances, almost things to wear to the office, and yep. if you're in a you know, if you're um, working in the day, you don't want anything too overpowering. Yeah. Um, are there types of fragrances you should go for then if you want something to almost kind of sit in the background of? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I love the concept of like a skin scent. Mm. So not necessarily, you know, you almost can't figure out the notes. It just smells like really yummy skin that's kind of warm and like a little bit sweaty, but in a ni nice way. Because yeah. I've got two examples of that actually. Um, Beauty Pie Love is 
just gorgeous. It's like a soft white t-shirt, very nuzzly. This is a real kind of tinted moisturizer. It just goes with everything and it's not too powerful, just soft musk notes. And I don't mean musk as in like animal musk. I mean, pillowy, cloudy musk. So a little bit soft on the edges, a little tiny bit powdery, but not powdery in a kind of old way. Just really modern, very easy, almost undetectable, but people go, oh my God, you smell oh, amazing. And I can't wow, tell. Wow, like, I love that. Amazing? that. See, I'm very drawn to musks because I, okay, I love that love kind of, one. you know, almost nothingness of yep. musks yep. because you kind of just feel like you're wearing a really cuddly like cashmere jumper totally. and it's cozy and... Yeah, so that would be a really lovely oh, every love day. That. Don't have time to think about it. You know it's going to go with everything, yeah. every temperature, every day of the year, every occasion. It's just so easy. And people, I mean, the reviews <sighs> online, there are over like 500 positive reviews on this. It's people go nuts for that one. That's a hidden treasure. I've a never... Real, I mean, amazing, amazing. And I wow. worked with them recently and I was like, this is incredible. And they're like, oh, that's really sweet of you to say. I'm like, no, 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 this is out of like, <laughs> no, it's this really, is really quite phenomenal. And actually, do you know what? It's made by the same guy who made Le Labo Santal 33, <gasps> which is the one that people run down the street following yes. people. So clearly he knows like what triggers people. I love it. And then another skin scent. This is a not a very well-known brand, a British um, small independent brand called Olfactive O. And this is called Skin. And the inspiration behind this, and also by the way, the label comes completely blank and it comes with this little stamp, like a ink pad stamp. So you press your fingertip on it and you stamp it so it makes it your own. I it's like love skin. that. Oh my God. So yummy. This and is a lovely British brand. British brand. Um, and Olivia, the lady who sort of runs the whole company, her inspiration behind this is, and I'm glad you're spraying it there because she describes the smell like you've been sunbathing we've been reading in the sunshine on holiday and you turn onto your tummy to have a little snooze and it's the smell of like sun cream and a little bit of sand and a little bit of seawater in the kind of nook of your elbow like slightly tousled hair soft warm skin it's oh, almost been that. like caramelized by the sun a little bit salty as well a little well, bit isn't salty it? That's isn't it amazing delicious so just yummy skin doesn't everyone want to smell that yummy skin? I love it. And that's almost the most perfect category for, you know, your sort of day-to-day, -day sort of undetectable Exactly. Sense. That's your sort of, I don't know, like a sort of easy, like, I know I'm going to feel good in this outfit type fragrance. Like, I'm just going to grab this because it works for everything and I don't need to think about it too much. And it's everyone needs a kind of skin scent and those 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 musk notes those pillowy soft musk notes and i'm sure in these fragrances there are little bits of vanilla and when you say vanilla to people they go oh no i don't yeah. want to smell like a dessert trolley actually vanilla makes fragrances rounded and enveloping and warm and almost kind of maternal because it's a mm. smell of like mom and like ice cream and stuff without it being puddingy so those notes, even though you might not think you like vanilla, actually they become very important in those skin scents because they just cling onto skin and they don't let go. And because the quality now of fragrances is so sophisticated that, I mean, I would always be really put off by vanilla because I would think yep. headache, headache, headache. No, thank you. Yep. But actually, you know, uh, if you wanted to kind of have something slightly sweeter or something slightly warmer, um, what are your favourites? when it comes to kind of oh my gosh, the sweetness. Because that one's quite sweet, isn't it? That one's quite sweet. So that's got a sort of popcorn nuttiness about nuttiness, it. Yeah. Um, probably, like I think it's amazing fragrance. I love how it's been made. I love the bottle. I wouldn't personally wear it because I prefer more like enveloping vanilla style fragrances. Yeah. So that's just my opinion, like my own sort of preference. Yeah. Um, but, oh, that's a tricky one because I do have like, hundreds of yeah. favourite fragrances. So when you do go statement fragrance, and yeah. if you really want something to stand out, perhaps, you know, an evening fragrance or something a little bit louder, yeah. are there any recommendations that oh God, you I've got, like? Um, I've got one, two, I've got a few actually. Um, actually, we were talking about Aqua de Palma earlier on, so let's talk about them now. They have this sort of subcategory in their 
oh, yum collection called Signatures of the Sun. So they take one very precious ingredient and they give it the sort of Italian luminosity treatment. So there's a there's a um, there's an amber one, there's sandalwood, there's uh, Oh gosh, all sorts of ones in the collection. So they focus on one amazing ingredient and this one is oud and spices. So they've taken oud and everyone thinks of oud as like rudy, oudy, nudy, like quite yeah. sort of quite filthy and animalic and like earthy and really strong and overpowering. Yeah. But if it's been used in this kind of way and shot through with light and sunshine, it can actually be really... Um, just really sort of romantic and and delicious and addictive, but not in a kind of overpowering way. So that's kind of a, a perfume with presence, yeah. but without it being so strong that it gives you a migraine. So they're really good at kind of creating sort of light, yeah. but actually quite powerful and long lasting fragrances. I must say that's the one of the nicest it's oods nice. I've smelled because Isn't I'm amazing. I would never normally wear an oud, but that's Me like, too. that but has got that it's almost like freshness to it, hasn't it's it? It's amazing, isn't it? The way they've made that is so clever. So it's like you've taken the sort of the oud idea and you've shot it through with this beam of light, like you're in church and there's a beam of like spiritual light that comes through. Like, I love that sort of thing. Um, another really good, like, I'm here, I've arrived, a new molten brown, Labdanon Dusk. So molten brown, they're celebrating, I think it's their 50th anniversary. It's in my notes can't find it anywhere. Um, 50th anniversary and to celebrate they've got this sort of new um, like decadent opulent collection and this is one of them Labdanon Mus Dusk. So Labdanon is a little bit like a kind of smoky like resin like a tree resin that gets quite it's quite holy it's quite sort of oh. sexy church am I allowed to say that to telegraph readers probably yeah. Do you see what I mean sexy church like oh, myrrh wow. and these sort of sumptuous um like holy resins it's a bit communion it's a bit naughty choir boy it's that sort of vibe and it is just like i've walked into a room and here i am with my perfume that's beautiful it's a, stunning isn't it wow such wow. a clever one i love and that quite one quite unexpected from molten brown totally would you say yeah because you think of them as a kind of bath body and bath foams and bubbles and all of that but actually their fine fragrances are so stunning and in some of their main um, stores, like definitely the Regent Street one, I think they've got them all over the place. You can do this sort of fragrance analysis thing where you can ask, um, answer all these questions on screen and they help you find the fragrance match. And I love all that stuff because Amazing. if you want to just spend a bit of time like having fun with it, um, those questions are actually really great at figuring out the, the basis of like what your perfume preferences are and finding a fragrance that you like. I think we all put so much pressure on ourselves to find the one. Yeah. And it's a bit like, it's not a husband, it's not a partner, it's not a wife. It's just, it's okay to like a few. And, you know, if you want a sort of, I'm going to a big party, I need to smell amazing because I need that confidence booster. Have one in your, in your wardrobe for that reason. If you think, you know, I'm going to like a gallery or I'm going to the cinema, don't want anything too strong to upset people have your kind of skin scent daily mm. kind of easy easy one if you're feeling a little hungover on a saturday morning you want your splashy citrus like blow the cobwebs away so think about your signature scent but in different emotions and moods that actually you go through all the week because i don't have one emotion i'm all over the place i'm a roller coaster especially after the past couple of years so think about the classic scenarios where you'd wake up and go I want to feel like this, or I'm feeling like, like this, can a fragrance just push me somewhere a little bit more positive, you know, because I think there's a lot of joy in smelling something very beautiful that someone's put so much care and so much passion into and creativity, and you think, oh God, there's still that in this world, it's going to be all right, today's going to be fine. I love that. One of the one of my favourite questions that was um, that was sent over by a reader earlier was, about how scent can really send signals about your personality. And it really can, can't it? Yeah, totally. Usually on a kind of school run, a busy day, I wear just an eau de cologne, a splashy, citrusy, herbal eau de cologne because I need my head to be clear. I've got kids to drop off. I've got to think about what I'm doing in the day work-wise. 
you know, I've got stuff on my mind. There are birthday cards to buy. My husband works in a hospital. I need to look after him too. You know, there are lots of things on my mind. So I need something clear, sharp, elegant, not too sort of overwhelming to kind of help me feel energized enough to get my to-do list in order. Yeah. Um, and if I smell like that, I, I, I feel like I'm smelling sort of clean and energized and uplifted. And I'm one of those people that will quite embarrassingly and awkwardly just talk to anyone because I don't know, maybe it's like a nervous thing, but I'm very like, hi, you look lost, can I help? <laughs> really like dangerous in lots of scenarios, but I do <laughs> chat a lot to people and I'm always trying to be as helpful as possible. And I think, God, you know, feel welcoming. So I try to wear fragrances that are bright and easy breezy because I like to give off that impression. Yeah. yeah. But there are days where my toddler's woken me up in the middle of the night. My alarm went off early. My husband woke me up from snoring. I'm in a really bad mood and I've already started the day before anyone else has just feeling, you know, yeah. Darth Vader. And sometimes, actually, it's quite nice to kind of lean into that and go, Do you know, I'm just going to wear the smoky leather, Rudy Oody, you know, <laughs> don't come near me, thunderstorm, the smells of like dad's coat on fireworks night, you know, smoky and like dark and, you know, moody, just to create a sort of like, don't come near me vibe. Because I I sometimes I don't want people to come near yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Um, with um, can we talk about this one? So <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh, this is joy. This is so lovely. So this is one of it's, our shortlisted fragrances in yes. the. Um, well Smart done, Beauty. guys, because that is a masterpiece. It's so lovely. Oh. So um, sunflower pop. If you don't know about Floral Street, do you? Can you tell our our um... Floral Street British brand? Um, everything about the brand is highly sustainable from the packaging. It's amazing. Jeez, it's amazing. Okay. It's not what you think it's going to be either. I mean, the packaging is made of pulp. It looks a bit like an egg box and everything is 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 brilliantly thought out. And they're all um, genderless. There's no kind of set words. I remember speaking to the founder, Michelle, um, and she doesn't talk about any kind of um, like sexiness or um, handsome or anything that might steer your thinking. Just yeah. really amazing fragrances. Some are like really punchy, like she, the sheep one that she's got is mega, which is kind of forest floor, but loads of like velvet in there as well. Like amazing, brilliant, brilliant British brand, so well made um, and just fun as well. Like look at this bottle. So this was so um, commissioned and made in sort of collaboration with the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and it is a tribute to sunflowers and when you smell it it's completely wild you <laughs> don't think real... it's going to be like you think sunflowers oh it's going to be sort of soft and you know sunshiny yeah. <gasps> and actually it is this bright pop of like really almost acidic yellow and yeah. citrus fruit so you've got some bergamot in there which you talked about before that weird knobbly oh, citrus fruit mandarin as well almost that mandarin like you sort of peeled the mandarin and it's like sprayed in your in your face it's really bright and zesty and then it mellows a little bit as well it's totally so zingy, joyous it? it's so zingy it's just full of joy and happiness and i i sort of love that it's launched towards the end of summer beginning of autumn because yeah. Lots of autumn fragrances are quite kind of rich and opulent. And this is a bit like, no, we are carrying on with sunshine. It keeps bringing that joy and it is so uplifting. And when you look at the painting, it is it is just so it's soul lifting, isn't yeah. it? And that's the fragrance to match it. Oh, I absolutely love that. So if you don't want to kind of commit to a fragrance straight away, yeah, how uh, there are lots of kind of ways to discover new fragrance now, aren't Oh my there? gosh. I mean, well done to the perfume industry because, and I think lockdown had a lot to do with this because I always love the idea of like, try before you cry. So get the little sort of discovery sets. Not many brands were doing that where they have a sort of box set with maybe five or six of yeah. their hero perfumes or the full collection. And now so many people are doing it. Lush is a really great example, actually. I've got a little example I love here. this. I thought this was um, Lush, a notepad. Lush, you, you think, <laughs> oh, bath bombs so for 12-year-olds. For no, their fragrances are incredible. Beautiful, fine fragrances that don't cost the earth either. Totally amazing. 
amazing team that makes them as well. And look how sweet this little box is. So they do all these little sets of um, of their fragrances because they actually have a load of their a lot of fragrances and sweet little boxes like this. So really beautiful. nice gifts with quite a generous. Um, whoops, hang on, like a, almost like a sort of travel sized, but good to experience to experiment with some keep them on your skin for a few days keep coming back to them see how you know if you really connect to them great buy the full bottle or keep them in your fragrance wardrobe and use them for sort of whenever so a um, really good example of a uh, discovery set loads of brands do them honestly um they're the best thing because also great for gifting because actually, such a great gift. isn't I mean, it it's such so a great beautiful. gift? Because it takes the pressure off you and they have to decide. So if you've got somebody in your life who you want to buy fragrance for and you know they love fragrance and, or they know you know they love a, spe a specific brand or a specific shop, but you're not quite sure what to get them, a discovery set, a sort of miniature kit is brilliant because they can explore the brand that they like or explore new perfumes but ultimately they have to choose the one they like. You don't have to do that choosing. Yeah. Um, and how much is that gift set? Oh my gosh, I haven't got a clue. I think set. it's something along the lines of 30-ish pounds, I think. such a great gift, isn't Which it? is great for that many. I don't know for sure. I know that your team are being brilliant. We're going to pop everything, the, yeah. Here. Um, following this, Street, yum. Yeah, uh, following this, we'll have all of the links. Perfect. Um, and everyone will get, uh, uh, you know, all of the, the um, products that we've covered today in an email um and so what's this <gasps> okay Gorgeous i've got a few more coffee things, cup but yeah let's oh. it does look like a coffee <laughs> cup so i mean it's fragrance but you know we're talking candles here and i love the idea of buying a candle for like your winter season but not necessarily christmasy christmasy because actually we can't all afford to buy 25 million candles for every different week of the year no this is a new one from Deep Deep. They're celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. And this candle, like I love, this wood is like an, uh, a tribute to their um, apothecary style glass and wooden cabinets in their store in Paris. It's so cute, but it does look like a coffee cup, doesn't it? Um, this is the Paris candle. And it is this, it's walking past um, Notre Dame and you've got the smell of the myrrh and the frankincense coming out from the thing, the wet, damp cobblestones, a little bit of someone's like cigarette in the distance. It's so joyous and so, um, it's such a beautiful love letter to Paris and they have sort of encapsulated it in, in this candle and it's just stunning and it's wintry, it's warm. It's cozy. There are like some warm spices as well, but not spices that say Christmas pudding, but it does feel wintry, like it's snowing outside and I there mean, are bells ringing somewhere. just makes you somewhere. want to go home, be really cozy under a blanket, yep. like that, with yep. a nice, oh, that's it's, beautiful. It's just, it's heaven, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, so is special. it not the nicest gift, getting a candle oh at Christmas? Oh my gosh, especially a dipty candle. Oh, God, just gorgeous. And the kind of smoky green. I think that's the limited edition for this year because it's all like the 60th anniversary. Yeah. There's this really cool pop up in Selfridges at the moment. If anyone's in London, go and see the kind of um, amazing installations. It's very, very cool. I mean, your house must just smell incredible all the time. <laughs> is it? I yeah. 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 <laughs> I do have a lot of I have them all kind of along the, um, the fireplace and my husband sometimes will be like brave enough to choose one to light. And he knows all my favorite ones. There's one, oh my gosh, it's my favorite, one of my favorite smells on this whole planet. And it's called, uh, it's by Fornacetti and it's called Otto. And Fornacetti is the, um, the ceramics company. Um, and they make all these beautiful plates with insane like gold etching and painting and stuff. And the smell is, supposed to it will it's inspired by the um the artist's floor so you have these smells of like paint and wood and wood chip and the roasting sort of fire of the of the kilns where the plates are being um cooked and it's the smell of Claridge's hotel which i love because it's Claridge's i mean i don't go and stay there all the time all the time i've been there a couple of times but you know it's not my <laughs> usual hood because it's Claridge's but i just love that hotel so much in the beauty industry we've been to lots of events there yeah. so it feels like this home in this really yeah. strange way even though it's this big five-star hotel 
we go there a lot for work events and every time you walk in there there's this smell and it's this sort of ambery warm woody smell of just it smells like glow a glowing aura of just happiness and I figured out that the candle that they burn is Otto Fornasetti and it smells just delicious so I light it and I try and make my house smell like Claridge's which is never a bad thing isn't oh, it if I can't never be there a bad thing. Um, so Amanda just asked a question um, actually about sort of fragrance and memory mm -hmm. is there a, a way to kind of break a negative association with a particular accent I speak to a lot of people about um, fragrances that remind them of a sad time, yeah. whether it's a, a parent that passed away or a bad breakup or a time in their life which was really sad. And I think that you're never going to be able to run away from a fragrance. If it's around or if it's in stores, you're always going to see it and possibly smell it. And I wonder whether there's always a way of finding the positive in just the worst situations. I've been through terrible things in my life and you always try and find the good bit because if it hadn't happened we wouldn't be here today mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the people around us today and sometimes when you smell something that makes you feel sad especially if it's a very raw recent emotion it could be part of the grieving process it could be part of your um, your process to get through this difficult time and I think about um, I think about the fragrances that my parents wear and almost in a way I'm 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 terrified to smell them one day when they're no longer here but I know that that will be part of my grieving process and it will be hard to, difficult and heartbreaking to smell but because fragrance has such an incredible transportative time machine effect to one's memories it might be the most beautiful way of remembering that person one day when the grieving is less painful and it's more it's 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 so, when the days are a little bit softer it might be the most beautiful way to remember a moment that was difficult but that still had lots of joy and positivity in it if it's a time in your life where you were young and there were fun things happening and those things happening are very different now and life feels very different I and mean, we've got kids I can't remember the last time I was in a nightclub do you know what I mean like there are <laughs> smells from my teens and 20s that I smell and I just almost I, I miss that person but I also smell that fragrance and I think I was that person I was that nutter that danced on the table on cowboy boots and walked home at 6 a.m and had a ball and I loved that I was that person and she's still in me she just looks very different and with a very different life now but I love that person that I used to be and I tried to change my sort of sadness into god I was so much fun and there's definitely some of that still in me and I'm going to try and let that smell help me push that person I have in me a bit more to the front and be a little bit more I don't know whether it's confident or um, outgoing or ballsy or whatever it is that you don't feel that you are at the moment maybe a smell from your past can actually help you feel it again if it's an ex-boyfriend literally just throw it in the dustbin <laughs> because there's nothing yeah. good about that yeah. but you can smell and congratulate yourself for getting out of that time yeah because that's still a good positive emotion as well try and see if there's a good sort of answer to it yeah I love that I mean you it fragrances that that one tool for just instantly oh taking gosh. you somewhere isn't it there aren't many things that remind you of the past other than photographs and maybe the pet the stories that your parents tell of when you were younger there's nothing else that reminds you of those times and there's a perfume that it's by Guerlain it's called Mitsuko that I smell and I think of immediately the texture and the softness of my French grandmother's apron. She passed away like 15 years ago. I can't remember anything else about, I remember her making lots of apple tarts all the time and just the fun that we used to have in her kitchen. But when I smell that perfume, I smell her apron and hugging her apron because I must have been small at that level that you can smell yeah. someone's sort of tummy. And I remember that more vividly than any story that anyone can tell me about her and that's so precious and 
wonderful, isn't it? That's so beautiful, absolutely. We've um, so we've got a couple more questions to kind of get through towards the end. Um, I can't believe we've already been talking for forty-five minutes. Oh, gosh. Um, so uh, a Julie, more, haven't you? I know, about I either. know. Oh. So. Um, yeah, let's let we'll take one more question. We'll do a, some more, and then I'll sneak in a few more questions at okay, the end. Okay, I've got um, time. So Julie has asked if you go straight from the office um, with more of a light, subtle scent, and you go out for the evening and apply something stronger over the top of what you're already wearing. Yep. Can it be complimentary or just a car crash? Oh my God! <laughs> never a car crash. Gosh, it's just perfume. It's okay. We're gonna be all right. So. If you're wearing something quite light, like one of these skin scents or something citrusy in the day, the chances are that the weight of it will have evaporated pretty much, unless you're going to reapply it all throughout the day, which yeah. people don't really do that unless they have a travel size and, you know, you tend to spray your fragrance first thing in the morning and you just sort of leave it by then. Once you get to the end of the day, it will probably have mostly evaporated, unless it's a very heavy fragrance. But in this case, we're talking about something like you wear in the day. So then wearing something different on top, it's all right. Yeah. It's going to be okay. You're not going to create this sort of clashing thing. Um, what I wouldn't do is layer, I, lots of sort of brands and people talk about layering different fragrances together and mixing them. I don't know about that. I think I was chatting to a perfumer last week and he did this, he kind of created this really great analogy. It would be a bit like asking two Michelin starred chefs to make two different desserts and putting them on the same plate. Mm. Like just just wear one. Don't try and like layer too much. Just enjoy the beauty and the artistry of one gorgeous fragrance. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So shall we go through some of the, okay, the so ones? I've got a couple more. I bought this one in. This is a an, another sort of um, not too well known, but beautiful Parisian brand, BDK Parfum. Mm. And they have a new, this a, a Parisian company and the perfumers who make all the fragrances are like top amazing perfumers. You've got like Mathilde Bijaoui. She makes lots of perfumes for Jo Malone London. She is like oh, an absolute just maestro. Um, this is their new one, Velvet Tonka. And actually there are lots of, oh, I don't, I literally like drink this ivy drip it straight into me. I love it so much. You are going to love this. Velvet Tonka. So already you've got the texture of wow. velvet. I know. You've got the That's texture amazing. of velvet. So it's very sort of rich and opulent. This is like like winter party wow. wearing, you know, a, a little black dress and jewellery and spray to spray. find some skin. Oh my God, it's amazing. I actually sprayed it on this about six hours ago and it still smells so strong. It's nuts. So Velvet Tonka, you've got the texture wow. already so I, I mean, know that's amazing quite the, 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 the um oil sort of quantity is almost like extra de parfum it's super super high like intensity um so the longevity is amazing so velvet you've got the kind of textural like yumminess of velvet then tonka bean is this weird ingredient and actually in this really kind of nerdy kind of way I've brought some tonka bean with me. <laughs> here's, a, some I prepared here's some earlier. I prepared earlier. <laughs> tonka beans are these sort of dry, shriveled up. They look a bit like almonds. They're not almonds. Um, dried, shriveled up. I don't know whether you can see here. Um, they're like these sort of husky, crispy, dried, strange beans. And they smell of sort of chocolatey vanilla. They are amazing. Lots of people, you can actually smell them. Like They Ooh, smell amazing, don't they? Wow. In the little thing, you can smell wow. it a bit more clearly. Um, not... It's a, it's a really interesting smell because it's a bit chocolatey, it's a bit vanilla-y and lots of people, lots of French cooks actually add tonka beans into stews mm. or cakes to give it like depth, a little bit like how you would put like a bit of ketchup in your bolognese sauce, you know, just to give it a bit of like it's richness. It's not messing around, is it, tonka beans? Amazing. Amazing, mad, mad smell. A little bit almondy as well, but wow. creamy almond rather than like bitter almond. I think I've oh only God, really smelt tonka bean in very, very sweet. Yes, it's scent. used to kind of this carry like... that chocolatiness because it's the most amazing and you can extract from tonka bean. It's up, uh, totally amazing. I love it. Wow. I so mean, it just smells like winter cashmere a yeah. little bit of kind of caramel in there, but not dessert trolley. No. It's not too puddingy. So it's just so well made and it's just warm and nuzzly, there's this kind of creaminess about it. 
it's just that's utterly like delicious. I literally want to bite my own skin yeah. when I wear that. <laughs> you could, you could, that's good so I bought that one. It's very, very new. Delicious. It's totally amazing. Another. Oh my gosh, you can tell that I like those kind of big smoky ones. This is very, very cool. So Estee Lauder and it's out. It's actually out today at Boots and John Lewis um, and then out nationwide in a couple of weeks. Estee Lauder have created a luxury fragrance collection. There are eight in the collection, all made by amazing perfumers. Anne Flupeau did one. Um, this is Dominique Ropion, who is, Ooh. I mean, amazing. Yes. And it's called Infinite Sky. So of the whole collection, so it goes from kind of green and light and quite sort of uh, crystalline uh, into sort of florals, a little bit of leather, and then into kind of the smoky, smoky town, which I love. It's kind of dark. It's a little bit more floral than the velvet tonka. So it's got these sort of deep, rich, ambery spices. It smells like faraway land. Wow. It's so magical, isn't it? It's That's like really beautiful. nighttime. Again, another great wintry, enveloping. That is a delicious winter. Isn't it stunning? Sense, yeah. So beautifully made. A couple of interesting things about this collection. They did a neurosensory study on 100 women to... Um, to find out the conscious and subconscious reactions to the fragrances in the collection. So they were, so these fragrances instilled like a sense of kind of confidence and sensuality and all sorts of amazing emotions. So all of them represent different emotions. And there's this really cool technology, it's called Scent Capture Fragrance Extender, which is a little bit like, um, you know those all day SPFs that last all day? They're yeah. kind of encapsulated, they're like slow release lamella. This has this technology and it's really exclusive to SD Lauder. So they last from the moment you spray for 12 hours really, really intensely. So clever. And I think you'll we'll see a lot of that in the next coming years where fragrances um, last a lot longer than you think they're going to. So clever. And they do a discovery kit, actually. It's it's like 70 quid and it's all eight of them from John Lewis um, so you can discover all of them and actually it's a whole wardrobe in itself so clever I mean that's amazing that's not Isn't just a amazing? perfect gift but really great for kind of yeah, you know like for go yourself, to the counter smell the ones you know if you like to it's just a really clever beautiful collection absolutely stunning I really enjoyed like learning about that one actually what's this beautiful oh my gosh okay so two really cool I bought these from home um, and they're great gifting ideas. So we've talked about discovery kits as a good idea. If you're generally wanting to buy someone a fragrance, I mean, I think that a really good way to start is to find out what they've got on their dressing table, whether it's like texting their kid and saying, take a picture of their dressing table mm -hmm. and find out, um, find out what they really love wearing and see if they've got a kind of eau de parfum version or a floral version so let's say for instance uh, Lancôme La Vie Belle has quite a few different sort of sub versions mm. of that fragrance see if there's one they don't have because you'll know they'll like that find out what they've got on their dressing table figure out the sort of family that of fragrances they like they like I mean families are quite sort of difficult because there are sub families you can have floral as we talked about wet dewy Tim Burton yeah um find out generally the vibe of the fragrances they like get like write them down on a piece of paper go to a counter and say this is what this person likes help me and they will help you kind of decipher like the ingredients and find something in that category um so discovery sets something similar to what they like or you could gift them their favorite fragrance but like take it up to the next level so for instance oh my god this is so special um I actually wrote a, a piece about this. So I went to go to Harrods where they have the Guerlain counter, but it's like the mega Guerlain counter. And I think you can have this in a few of the different big sort of flagship counters. So they do this great service where not only can you do a kind of, um, it's like online dating, it's like a sort of digital analysis thing. So you tap um, answers to questions and it helps you find your fragrance because they've got wow. tons and tons of fragrances. But also they will put it in a really special bottle. You can choose the color. You can have like a bright yellow, green, red, wow. black, white, anything. Um, you can have the little spritzy thing as well. And you can have it um, with, you can have it personalized. You can have anything you write, you want on it. So you could have your name, a beautiful date for like, wedding day or an anniversary or birthday um, so if you know somebody who loves a girl fragrance or 
somebody who's always wanted a classic Guerlain, get them this, it's so special. And it doesn't actually cost the earth at all. I think it's an extra 60 pounds or something to get the sort of bespokerized version. Mm -hmm. um, so beautiful. Another really nice one, if you know somebody who loves Almond Jane, or you could get them a gift voucher for, voucher for this. Um, Almond Jane, um, so Linda Pilkington, again, British, amazing perfume founder, extraordinaire. She will um, take your favorite fragrance from her collection. Uh, you can choose the intensity you want it in. So very, very powerful or like a sort of more summery light version. Have it made, have it um, put into a bottle, uh, color of your choice. And again, you can have it like engraved and stuff. And it just makes something that you love even more special. So if you have a partner who loves a certain fragrance from her brand, or somebody you know who's always wanted something like that, it's just an extra special little touch. So loads of places do this sort of engraving and all sorts of things. I love, just love it, love it. One of my favorite um, favorite ever scents is by Woman Jane. It's, um, I think it's called Tolu. Oh my God, her <gasps> perfumes are incredible. So beautiful. Oh, and her candles, she does like, oh, stunning. Incredible. Have we got through them I all? I think we've got through everything. Is there anything I've missed? I mean, nope, this room smells all. pretty sensational I, yes, right I, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As do my arms, I'll be the, Best smelling person on the tube home tonight. Um, thank you so much, Alice, and thank you for the audience for watching. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did, and I learned so much from Alice.